Hello Java developers and welcome to another video on building serverless applications on AWS with Java. And in particular in this video, Java 21 and Spring Boot 3. Yes, that's right. In this video, you're going to learn how you can take a Spring Boot 3 application running with Java 21, pick that up, run it on AWS Lambda and do that in a performant way using Lambda Snapstar. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Over 70% of you listening to this video aren't actually yet subscribed. And if you do scroll down and hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, I promise to you Java developers out there that I will keep producing content that is meaningful for you. And that means I want you to reach out. I want you to comment below. I want you to tell me the kind of things that you're interested in and the kind of content that you want to see. And I promise you, if you subscribe, if you comment, I will produce the content that you want to see. Thank you all for listening. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so to start things off, I've gone from start.spring.io. I've generated a brand new Spring application. You see, I'm using Spring Boot 3. I'm using Java. I'm packaging things as a jar and I'm using Java 21 really specifically. And then of course, I've added a dependency for Spring Web because I'm gonna run this as an actual web application hit generate, open this up on my local machine, and I end up with an application that looks a little something like this. And if you've used start.spring.io before, you'll be very familiar with this very, very empty application. And we're now gonna take this and run this on AWS Lambda. And we're gonna do that using the serverless Java container. And the serverless Java container, if I just go over to this GitHub repository, is something that's provided by AWS to allow you to run Spring applications on Lambda. And it does that by providing a set of libraries that provide this mapping layer to take the request that comes in from API Gateway and translate that to something that Spring can understand and then doing the same again on the way back out. So we're gonna use the serverless Java container to run Spring on Lambda. And remember, this is Spring Boot 3, this is Java 21. Let's actually get back to IntelliJ and look at exactly how you're going to do that. So the first thing you need to do is add an additional dependency to your project. And that dependency needs to be to the serverless Java container, of course. So I'm just gonna copy that in from GitHub, add the serverless Java container, and you see now I've got that dependency there ready to go. That's all the dependencies I need for this Spring Boot application to run on Lambda. The next thing you need to do is add a completely new class to your Java project. Now I'm gonna call this class Lambda Handler. Of course, you can call this whatever you want. I would recommend using something sensible like Lambda Handler, just so that it makes sense when you look at your application code, you know exactly what this is. This is the method that Lambdas are gonna invoke when a request comes into your function. And rather than you watch me type out a whole bunch of application code, I'm just gonna copy this in from the GitHub repo and then I'll talk you through exactly what is happening. Okay, so I've copied that code in now and there's a couple of things actually happening in this new class that you need to add this Lambda handler class. The first is this handle request method that you're overriding down at the bottom here. This is what Lambda is actually going to invoke. And you see that this handle request method is simply calling this handler. And that handler is this private static variable up at the top here. And it's calling the proxy stream method on that handler. And in that proxy stream method is where all of the magic happens. It's that method that takes the inbound request payload from Lambda, that might be API Gateway REST APIs, translates that to something Spring can understand and then passes that request onto Spring. And then it does the same again on the way back out to actually generate the response. So you'll see that the actual types against this handler method here are AWS proxy request and AWS proxy response. These are types that are specific to API Gateway REST APIs. If you were using HTTP APIs, with API Gateway, then them two types would be ever so slightly different. The other interesting thing that's happening in here is you've got this static constructor here, and this is code that's gonna run when Lambda first initializes this class. So when the request comes into Lambda, it's gonna instantiate the class that you've defined, which is this Lambda handler class, and at that point, all of this code is going to run. And you'll notice in this static code block here that we're actually using the Spring Boot Lambda container handler. This is something that comes from the serverless Java container. 
And we're using this get AWS proxy handler. And this is where you're actually going to pass in your Spring application context. So you'll see here, I'm specifying this demo application that you saw earlier. And that is what's going to actually map everything up. And it's going to set all the magic up. And it's going to initialize your Spring boot. And it's going to initialize your Spring context. So this is where the magic happens. This class here, these 33 lines of code, including my input statements, is everything you need to be able to run this Spring application on Lambda. And remember, this is what Lambda is going to actually invoke when a request comes in, this handle request method right here. So just to give it this a bit more real world, let's actually add a controller to this project. And with the magic of YouTube editing, you don't need to wait for me to type this code out. I can simply drop that in there. And you've got this now really simple demo controller that's just going to return a really simple string just to demonstrate this application actually running on AWS. And that's it from a Spring perspective. But now you just need a way to actually deploy this application. So I'm going to add another new file to the project. And I'm going to call that template.yaml. And we're actually going to use the AWS serverless application model to actually roll out and deploy this application. And rather than watch me type a whole bunch of YAML, I've got a sample template that I created earlier. If you want to learn more about AWS SAM, I've got other videos on my channel. I will link to them in the description below. The important thing, though, is this handler method here. And you see that I'm using that Lambda handler class and that handle request method. And this is the new class that you've just added to your project, this one right here. And this is what is actually going to call this handler method defined here. This SAM template is ready to go. Now you see it's using Java 21 as the runtime. And I've actually configured AWS Lambda snap start on here as well, just to try and improve that cold start performance of the function. The final thing I will just point out is with my actual event mapping here, where I'm mapping the API gateway route to my actual Lambda function, I'm using a greedy proxy path. So I'm specifying the path as proxy. This will tell API gateway to pass all routes onto my Spring Lambda function. And then I'm going to set the method to any. Again, this will just say any request that comes in for any path, pass that onto Spring and let Spring do the rest because routing is going to happen at the Spring layer. And now this is ready to deploy. So let's jump over to our terminal window. I've navigated into the directory where I've got that template.yaml file that I've just created. And I'm going to run the sam build command and I'm going to run that build inside a container image. And that just means all of the tooling that I need to compile a Java 21 application is just there, ready to go. I don't need to worry about my file system or my local machine being configured in a certain way. Okay, so that has now completed building and I'm just going to run the sam deploy command. I'm going to pass in the guided flag and then I'm also going to pass in my local AWS CLI profile. I can specify the CloudFormation stack you want to use, the region you want to deploy to, if you want to confirm changes before they actually get rolled out using CloudFormation change sets. Is Sam okay to create ion roles? Do you want to disable rollbacks? Yes, let's live life on the edge here. It's okay that our API gateway endpoint doesn't have authentication. And then we want to save all that data to a configuration file. Now, Sam is going to go off. It's going to create a CloudFormation change set, and it's going to deploy this application to AWS. Now, I'm going to just pause the video here for a second. When you're using Lambda Snapstar, it does take a couple of minutes to actually deploy, and none of you want to sit here watching me twiddle my thumbs for two minutes. So I'll be back in just a moment. And that application has finished deploying now, and you'll see the output I've been given includes some details about my actual function and my ARN. And if I hit that API endpoint, you see that I get a response back. I've got Hello Java Developers. I'm a Spring Boot 3 application running with Java on AWS Lambda. So there you have it. Java 21, AWS Lambda, Spring Boot 3, all set up, ready to go. And it really is as simple as that to run Spring on Lambda. The serverless Java container is a fantastic project. And big shout out to Dennis, who does a lot of the maintaining of that project. He is who makes all of this magic happen, amongst some other contributors, of course. As always, thank you very much for watching. If there are any other things you'd like to see me cover, whether that's content, whether that's ideas, whether that's diving deeper, into things like Spring Boot on Lambda, please reach out, let me know, comment down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, please keep on building.